can you share what does a minor league player you know the different levels of minor league what do they, what do they get paid and i was making i think a month and that was like before taxes and that was so where is faith how, how have you found faith and discarded faith in your life your journey as a man as a jugador because my dad's a pastor so i know that's, that really so that's number one um but we've always lived by the rule So my guest today is Jay Jackson, 17 year Major League Baseball professional, going on 18. But then nonetheless, we connected. For those of you who are looking to connect with me to answer your questions, text message or video conference, that's how I met Jay Jackson here on an app called Minex. So welcome to our suite here, our loft at the MGM Grand, brother. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. It's great to be here. Glad we connected the way we did. For sure. Amazing. We're just blessed to be here. Honestly. From from Minex? To actually connect. Yeah, it's crazy how it works. It's, it's a small world and having the, the ability to be here and connect with you the way I have is just amazing. I see you all over the place. So actually catching you at one place <laughs> and at the same time when I'm free and you're free has been nothing short of amazing. We do we chop chop. Well, I'm glad you're here in Vegas because we're at the our, our annual convention. Yeah. And I'm looking forward to see what your uh, experience is as you check it all out, the yeah, MGM Grand Arena. I'm excited. I'm excited. I got an invitation from Darren through you again, yeah. another person. So I'm excited to see what's going to happen today yeah. and enjoy the moments that I have here and enjoy the people. It's been a great vibe so far since I got in last night. So I'm excited to see what happens. Very cool. Smoking cigars. Oh, we were smoking cigars. You're like, chill because you're an athlete, right? Uh, no, I'm just, I just haven't been a huge, I haven't gotten to the cigar world yet. I've seen a lot of people, actually one of my old strength coaches from the uh, Pirates has his own cigar line. So I need to really need to start dabbling into that, I guess, a little bit. So, so you went to, uh, according to your Instagram profile, you went to the Giants, Braves, Jays, Twins. That's the last, those are the last, the most recent team. <laughs> right, right. Out of um, the career before then, it was, yeah. I got drafted in 08 by the Cubs. Then from the Bro, Cubs, I didn't know that. Seriously. I got drafted by the My Cubs man. in 08. Okay. Um, long time ago before they ended up winning the World Series. But the guys <laughs> that were on that team, I actually got to meet, meet a lot of them and play with some of them. So yeah. that was unbelievable. So I went from the Cubs and then went to, from the Cubs to, I think, the Marlins, the yeah. Marlins to the, Pirates, the Pirates to the Brewers, yeah. Brewers yeah. to the Padres, the Padres to overseas, Yo, overseas, really? back home to the Brewers, from the Brewers back overseas again, Wow. then back home. And then that's when I started putting, because I was never a huge social media person. I'm still kind of not. I'm trying to get more into it so I can gain some more followers. You're like the older millennial. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's tough. Like, I want because, you know, I want to respect the privacy of the people around me, too. Sure. But I understand, like, I need to have a platform and I need to, yeah. you know, try to, you know, instill knowledge and yeah. accept the fact that I've been in this game as long as I have to instill more knowledge to reach out to more people and yeah. help as many people as I can. Yeah. Bro, I, I love to see when you get back, if what I don't know what the capacity is, or the, the flexibility has. I love to see you do content, you know, in the dugout. I love to see, you know, I love to see you do content. You know, walk in the field because that stuff you'll never see again. No. And people get that perspective coming from you, like y'all, they're living vicariously through you. Yeah. But nonetheless, you know, I think one of the most impressive things of your career, as I've read about you and studied a little bit about uh, what you're doing as a professional athlete, is that you spent eight years in the minors yeah. before you got called up. Yeah. You know, most guys will. It, people start a business, they quit. They start a professional career, they quit. Uh, and their their whole dream is about to come true. They're not getting the call. Yeah. They're impatient with it. They quit. Not knowing that maybe next year, the year after, the year after, they actually get called to the big show. So can you explain that with that process for you? The process just started, you know, it started from, I guess, the beginning, from when I was probably four years old. It's just, you know, as you grow and you mature and you do something you love. So for me, it was just enjoying the game. So it was just enjoying the journey regardless of the mm -hmm. outcome at that point. And as long as they kept giving me uniforms, yeah. I was going to keep playing, right? So <laughs> I kept enjoying it and I just kept my head down and kept working and just enjoying the days, enjoying the ability to be out there and just understand that I was blessed to be out there every day and that it was a gift for me. And it was honestly, I felt like God was just taking me where he wanted me to go and he was guiding yeah. that path. So yeah. I kept getting jobs and I kept hopefully inspiring my teammates and inspiring the people around me and impacting the teams that I've been on. And I would think I have because most of the teams I've been on have been in playoffs. So yeah. I would say that we I've hopefully made an impact on those guys, but hopefully I've made an impact off the field too, 
um, in these years and just going wherever I've needed to go. And just like I said, just the, just working hard yeah. and enjoying the work, I think, and enjoying the game. Yeah. That's the main thing that that taught me because you never know when you're going to get that call. You just keep working, try to put up but the best. Eight years, though, bro. It's a long time. You just try to put like up I got a PhD in baseball by now. <laughs> I, I probably did. You know, probably Dr. Baseball, too. <laughs> but, no, it was just... You just try to put up the numbers. Like one thing my dad always told me when I was coming up was, you know, numbers don't lie. And, you know, you unfortunately see that, you know, sometimes in some ways they do lie in sports because you see guys that have great numbers and they don't get called up and they don't get to make it to that next level wow. because, you know, there might be some politics involved to a certain mm -hmm. degree where, you know, you know, a guy has social media followers, so he's going to get more eyeballs to the game yeah, exactly and, uh, that, and that's understandable like that is a business at this point so and they're trying to make money on their investments and what's going to be their best investment so i've never shied away from that but i just try to keep doing what i could do and doing the best i could being who i was yeah. and trying to instill just positivity and a good grind mindset to the guys around me and just hopefully putting up good numbers and luckily i was putting up good numbers and yeah i got a call <laughs> well speaking of numbers can you share what does a minor league player you know the different levels of minor league what do they, what do they get paid now I'm not sure now because yeah. I haven't been such a uh, such a such a big leaguer, such a big leaguer answer. It's not a big leaguer answer, but just like <laughs> my free agent contracts are different okay. than the standard minor league okay. contracts were like as like you came up because like now I think they're guaranteed housing to a certain degree. Oh wow! And they're guaranteed a certain minimum. What were you, what were you getting paid when I was coming up? Yeah. Um, I think the most I made on my original minor league contract was in AAA, like my second year in AAA, and I was making. I think twenty six or twenty eight hundred dollars a month, and that was like before taxes. And that was trying to like have a family, and we were paying for our own housing, paying for our food, you know, and just trying to live. Twenty six hundred a month. Yeah, so, and that was just that was the max like at the time too for most guys until you sign a free agent contract. Once I signed a free agent, contract, okay, you start making like five grand a month, like maybe <laughs> ten grand a month at the time. But now, you know, you see guys where I think the minimum guys are making are like five or six. And that's like in low A and high A where wow. you know, we're sitting there and we're like, you know, like that, that could have been a lot more doable <laughs> compared to what it was back then. So how did, how did you make your money? How did you stretch your money and still keep the dream alive and, 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 and be encouraged by it? Because, you know, sometimes you're like you're saying, yeah. you got to raise a family and some guys, they, they bounce because I can make more money at Enterprise rent or something. That's what a lot of guys did because the off season, you know, you would try to supplement your income, but it's hard to supplement that and try to train to be, you know, the best of the best at yeah. the same time, right? Because you have to pay to train at sure. the same time. So you're trying to make money to lose money to follow a dream. And most guys are... Because you're investing back in your exactly. asset, which is your, your and, body, yeah. In the first couple of years that I was in the minors, the team actually wouldn't let me go play winter ball, and um, which is a lot, what a lot of guys go do because it helps you play during the off season. Where's winter ball at? It's normally in Mexico or Dominican, wow. or Puerto Rico. You get to go down those places, and it's a little bit more cutthroat than it is here, which is nice. Um, but you get to get paid to go play during the winter, and so you get to train at the same time. So wow. luckily, my I think third year in the minors, I got to start playing winter ball and. I was playing winter ball ever since I was lucky that the money I made during winter ball kind of supplemented me through spring training and sometimes like through the first month or two of the season, honestly, until, like I said, I started making a little bit more money to help take care of everything. Yeah. Wow, man. And so you, you, you get called up into the league, then what is it? Did you they redo your contracts and you, you go already, from... You already have like in a contract, well, you make the league minimum unless like you, again, sign a free agent contract yeah. where your contract's more than league minimum, but... It, your salary just shifts. Like we prorated for like, okay, your, the league minimum at the time I think was five forty or something like that, and so they just you're getting prorated per day five five hundred forty thousand dollars throughout the season. So yeah. your salary just switches from twenty eight hundred bucks a month to you know prorated five hundred to forty one thousand six six hundred sixty six dollars a month. That's five hundred k a year. Wow. So so how did you handle that? You went from that now now you handle this bucket of cash. Like what? What does a what does a ball spy, a baseball player do? I'm wondering: is it, do baseball players spend money different than basketball players, than no. NFL players? Uh, is no, there a difference? I mean, I think you spend it how you like grew up, really, for the most part. You spend it with the environment you're around. But I was playing for the Padres, so my first checks I had weren't really. They weren't as much as they probably could have been because I was in California and like the taxes, taxes. Were, the taxes were just like, I think my first check, I got taxed more than I made. So I looked at it and I was just like, oh, okay. Um, I guess I have to figure out a way to stretch this. <laughs> so it was awesome. But um, 
I just tried to live the same way my dad always taught, taught me to live within my means. So yeah. don't, I bought myself a couple like little gifts like as I as I went through my career because after I left um, the Padres that year, yeah. I actually went to Japan and went overseas. So I started cool. making even more money than I was over here. And yeah. so I, I put a lot back, but at the yeah. same time, I would like just get myself like kind of depending on how my season went, yeah. I would get myself like a congratulations or a celebration gift to myself. Like, like what? What would you get? Uh, my first year, I think I got myself a Hublot and I think I bought a new car. Nice. And then my second year, I think I bought a Rolex and I bought yeah. my dad a Rolex that year. And then nice. the third year, I paid off my parents' house. <laughs> solid, man, solid. That, that was, and that was one of my goals too. Like I think yeah. throughout my life, like, Taking care of your parents is one of the few things that yeah. we never get to truly do. And so yeah. for me, um, doing that was huge. Are you the first in your family to be a pro athlete? Or are you come from a, a pro athlete we background? We have a lot of athlete backgrounds, but again, things happened and yeah. they gave up on their dreams a little too early. So I think I'm the first actual, like yeah. I made it to the, the pro yeah. the 1% of 1% of whatever <laughs> I was doing. But my dad told me that back in the day, uh, my aunt actually had a chance to be in the Olympics. Like she was going so to cool. Olympic qualifiers, but she ended up getting pregnant. I got it. <laughs> um, my dad had a chance to um, play basketball professionally, but his knees and ankles were kind of banged up. Like yeah. he got invited to try out, like for I guess NBA, like yeah. G League teams or whatever it was gotcha. back then. But sure. Um, so my family's athletic. My mom played softball until she tore her ACL. <laughs> Wow. Okay. She was playing softball and I was there the, the night she did it. And so she tore it and then tried to wow. not have surgery and come back. And then so are you, are you the, well, are you the wealthiest uh, highest income earner of your entire family as a pro athlete? Yes. Okay. So I, my, my question for guys like in your position and I coach a lot of clients too as well. They're, they're entrepreneurs or you know, they make a lot of money in their business. In your case, you're, you're the business, right? Is there like a protocol of how you talk about money when people ask? I mean, it's, it's natural. Hey, Jay, what's up? Because, you know, can I, you know, you know fund and finance this deal for me or whatever. Hey, what's that conversation like with family, with money? It's grown as I've grown. You know, as I was younger, I felt like, you know, helping my family out was like what I was supposed to do mm -hmm. as opposed to, you know, it's not like necessarily what I'm supposed to do, like especially my cousin stuff, like my mom and dad and sisters, like, yeah, yeah. but like my cousin stuff, like it's become to the point where it's like, okay, if you have an idea and you really truly have an idea that you think is gonna work, like bring me like something like that. Give me a business plan. Yeah, give me a plan. Yeah. I'm like, okay, I can invest in it that you can show me that we're gonna make something off of it that's yeah. gonna make sense, not just, hey, like I'm gonna like be a photographer and I need like $3,000 for this camera. Like, I don't know what you're gonna do with that. Yeah. Like, so. That's you're gonna be just sitting, a, on, you're gonna be sitting somewhere. But not, that's a testament use. to my dad too, because he's an entrepreneur. He's a businessman. He owns he? his own business right now. What type of business? He's a uh, credit card processing. Honestly. No kidding. So, merchant accounts. Yes, merchant okay. accounts. He's he's been in that for I don't know how long now, but he started doing that. He's owned a construction company, a trucking company. Yeah. He's just a serial entrepreneur his whole life. That's but good, I man. think that's a testament to him and the sacrifices that. Yeah. He did that to like spend more time helping me through my sports. And oh, that's great. And my family, my dad and my mom like never missed a game as I was going up and coming through high school. So that oh, was huge great. for me. Then plus my sister, um, my younger sister had Down syndrome. And so that was one of the few reasons why, again, we were talking about where I went to school. Yeah. I went to school in, for, in, in my hometown because I wanted to be close to my family and my sister. Got it. And it was, it was a blessing that I was did, able to do that. Did you get drafted in college or drafted out of high school? I got drafted out of college. I spent three years at Furman University. Furman, it's right. Three you were telling me that last yes, night. Three years at Furman. Look at that. Coach Ron Smith. Yeah, so that was, a, like I said, it was a blessing to be at home and be able to be close to them and be able yeah. to feel like I was helping and, you know, be able to kind of oversee as a big brother. And make sure that yeah, exactly. <laughs> <I was> there. <laughs> what, what, what coach in your career, whether, you know, Little League, uh, like, like what you call Pop Warner, or what you call uh, like uh, Little Leagues or all the way up, Mm -hmm. What coach has gotten the most out of you? What coach has gotten the most? I think, honestly, it's been myself. I think truly, like, I've had to, like, get the most out of myself. Like, they like they can push me, but, like, it's ultimately up to me like, huh. to get the work done. What an interesting and answer. You know, we're, we're reading a book. Patrick was, uh, he, he got this book, uh, 38 Letters to My Son by John D. Rockefeller. Right? Yeah. And so he's reading this book to us. And we're, you know, because, you know, Patrick's always got a book. He's always going yeah, through some knowledge. And one of the letters that he says, son, John, you know, ever since I was young, we're dirt poor. 
but somehow, some way, I always said to myself, I'm going to be the richest man in the world. And then became one. So to go from dirt poor to here, that's one thing to say. Like, if I'm a millionaire, I want to be the richest man because you got to head start. Exactly. But he's going from nothing. I want to be the richest man in the world. Right. And he said, nobody really got anything out of me. I wanted it for me. It was like, we, we asked, like how much, like me ask you this question. How much um, do you credit Michael Jordan being Michael Jordan, who he is, to Phil Jackson? Phil Jackson or is it Michael Jordan? I think they go hand in hand. It's percentage wise, give your, give your percentage. percentage. Percentage wise, I would say. Think? Michael wanted to be the greatest. He wanted to be the greatest ever, but Phil had Phil Phil had to push him to get there too, because Phil was again like everybody. Phil's Zen master. Like, yeah, right. Because yeah. Michael would get in the way of himself. That was the thing. Michael wanted it so bad that I feel like he got in the way of himself. Where Phil, Phil was like, "Hey." It's okay. You're killing your teammates. Yeah. <laughs> You're killing yourself. He had to find a way to like push Michael back from himself. So okay. I think it, it might be like a 90-10 because yeah. Phil was there yeah. just to be like, hey. That's, that's the percentage like, Patrick's talking about, man. As like a break or just like being able to touch him and be like, hey, like yeah. I know the buttons yeah. to push. I know how to get the best out of you because you as athletes, yeah. we don't know truly if, as great as we want to be to stop like I was telling you. Like now that I can really kind of talk about it, it's like I was kind of dealing with injuries all year. So me dealing with those, you don't know when yeah. to truly be like, hey, like yeah. I need to go get this fixed. Even if your performance is suffering because you feel like you're doing it for the team, you're doing it for yourself to prove something to yourself and to the world and to yeah. the people around you that like yeah. you're this great person, this great athlete yeah. and that nothing can stop you. Because I mean, you always hear Michael Jordan in the flu game, right? Like, so it's like, yeah. you, gotta, you gotta play through anything, yeah. but there's a time and place to do yeah. that. And like, having Phil there for him is why they won those championships because he was able to be like, hey, just Crazy. let me get that back just a little bit. So how many total games in an entire major league season? Like 100? 162. <laughs> That's not counting spring training, not counting the playoffs, depending on how far you go in the playoffs. So how do you, how do you deal with the grind of a long season like that for 17 years, bro? <laughs> Blessed. <laughs> uh, God has blessed me with Amen. that. And then did you do any practical things to, to keep you? Um, just, I started, as I've gotten older, I started listening to my body. I was talking to Fernando and Milton last night, but I started listening to my body as I got older. Yeah. And I think that's a huge thing that like as an athlete is knowing when to push your body, when not to push your body, because you don't want your, like, this is our, this is the one thing that we have that produces like what we're trying to do and live our dreams. Right. There's a point in time to push it. There's a point in time. But you got 162 games. You listen, like there's, okay. you listen like the days that like there is extra that you need to push, like you, our bodies are really amazing things. Like it knows when like we need like that extra oomph, like you can get through it. It's yeah. just like when you need to take that break, like again, Michael Jordan and Phil, like you need to find when to pull back. Like we try to go, go, go all the time. That's why yeah. I've probably pulled these muscles. Like while I pitched through a pulled hamstring before, <laughs> you know. Yeah, Patrick took us to the Yankee Stadium a couple yeah. weeks ago, and I was watching the players warm up, and they had cones. And so they started warming up their arm five yards, 10 yards, and back to 20, and back. So even in, in that, there's a professional life. Yeah. So they still had to warm up their arm that way. Yeah, you, you have to ramp up, especially because what we do is not a natural motion. So you don't just hop up and, just throw a baseball because, like, I feel like your your definitely arms gonna be sore. And you yeah. look at the position players that throw all the time. Like, if games are out of hand, they come back and tell these guys all the time. They say like, my arm is sore. I'm like, yeah, like, you throw five ten pitches, like your arm's gonna be sore because it's not natural. But you just you base the workouts around your body and try to like yeah. get as much recovery and downtime as you can to be ready for those games for those moments yeah. because you don't know which moments are going to be key you try to give the best you can every time yeah. and if you're available you just try to be as available as you can and my thing that i tried to do every year was i tried to be as available as i could like yeah. for everybody for my teammates no matter if it's on the field off the field like whatever they needed for me and so yes yeah. trying to just be consistent 17 years is like I said, that's just the body being right. blessed to, again, the, yeah. I've been through so many different training cycles too, yeah. you know, like from the old school, we're just going to load you up as much as we can to yeah. like the new school, you know, more like single leg balance things yeah. and trying to stretch and these, so it's just finding balance and just yeah. listening and like working with the guys and working with yourself. Like, again, like it's just trying to listen to it. Yeah. Just 
follow follow the lead. <laughs> how, how would you describe the difference in a locker room to the players, both from talent wise, mentality wise, money wise? How would you describe it? It depends on what team you're on a lot of times. Is it, is it, are there is, certain teams that you don't want to play for or certain teams that you want to get drafted to? I don't think there's certain teams you want to, don't want to play for or get drafted to. It's just like when you're losing. If you're on a losing team, like the vibes are different because the guys that are making more money when you're losing is like they a lot of times they know they're not going where. So it's like, OK, like I'm still getting paid like more than you. Okay. So like whatever. But like when you're winning, it's not about. It's not about paid, being paid or who you are or anything. It's about winning. Just like you see with the Olympics right now, the gold medal team. Nobody, everybody's taking a back seat because it's about winning the gold medal. And that's what you see the best teams, best people, best companies in life. Like, it's all about the goal. Like, everybody's going together for yeah. one common goal. And that's what the locker rooms are most like. Like, they're fun. They're supposed to be fun. It's a brotherhood. And it's a big family. You're going to fight. But it's how you rebound from those. Like, you don't. Like, you try to be as positive as you can because, like, baseball is a game of failure anyway, so it's a bunch of negatives all the time. <laughs> so there's a lot right. of angry guys all the time. Yeah. There's a lot of angry alphas all the time, you know <laughs> what I mean? So because everything's not going your way in baseball, and it normally never is. So yeah. you try to just literally try to be as positive as you can and understand that, like, it's a game, yeah. but, like, it's we're, – we're all – if we win the game, then what happens is what happens. As a pitcher – do you prefer being a starter or do you prefer being a reliever? I've said this so many times. I want to be, I'd rather be a reliever, even though the worst part about being a reliever is that you probably throw way too much sometimes, especially if you're one of the guys on the team, you throw so much. Like you see the starters, a good starting year, you get 30 to 32 starts. Out of 162 games. Out of 162, games. 162 games, right? Like those are like the, the best starters. They normally get between 30, 32 like maybe max 35, like if they're pushing it, like wow, throwing short okay. rest and things like that. But as a reliever, you're throwing, like if you're one of the guys, you're throwing 60, 70 games, not counting how many times that you're probably getting warm to go into a game mm. and how many games you're throwing back to back or nights and then days and how your body's recovering. But those to me were more fun because they meant that like we were winning the game when I came in because I was normally at the back end of the bullpen a lot when I was getting 60, 70 plus appearances, plus, you know, getting hot and getting warm, you know, 20, 30, 40 more times, you know, yeah. and then, like I said, throwing spring training, throwing in the playoffs. It's yeah. those times are just, they're, they're so electric. That wow. Just, you know, I'm, I'm living rather, vicariously I'd, through you, man. I'd, I'd rather I'm be, seeing it. I'd rather be there than just yeah. starting and throwing hundred pitches one game once a week. You know, for me, I'd like, I can affect, 60 games i yeah. can fix 70 games yeah I, i'd like that. wild thing right <laughs> it was awesome yeah, yeah japan it was amazing J japan mexico venezuela yeah. like all the places like yeah. different cultures seeing how they accepted us seeing how they played how they enjoyed the game of baseball like the love of the game is awesome like i was asking before you started shooting like you learned spanish i learned how spanish. did you learn spanish i learned spanish just from floating around the city Literally, so like you didn't have a translator. Like when I went to Japan, yeah. they gave us a translator, like yeah. two team translators. But when I went to Winter Bowl in Mexico and Venezuela, we didn't really have team translators. So like I would go out by myself to like go eat and like go just like just leave the apartments. Yeah. And so I had to figure it out myself. And wow. you try to use the apps and Google Translate and stuff. Um, but you know, you just pick up words as you go through those processes because yeah. you try to immerse yourself as much as you can in the culture yeah. to just enjoy, like, again, not just enjoy time being on the field, but enjoy the cities, enjoy yeah. being in those different places because those people are beautiful, man. Like, everywhere I've gone, like, they've treated me so well. Like, yeah. I've seen so many different amazing Baseball. People. Baseball. What do, call, what do you call a baseball player in the, Spanish? El jugador. Jugador. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, the interesting thing when I'm coaching people about money right they they talk about how they were raised in money and they had a certain language of money and that's broke i call it broken ease because it's a broke language i can't afford it eh, we ain't got no money for that right that's called broken ease but millionaires they talk about money differently okay how am i going to get it yeah it. how do we finance it so it's a different language different this position so it's funny that you say that because i'm coaching guys that speak a different language all the time but they're always in the wrong environment so i'm coaching them to get in the right environment if you're in the right environment, you're immersed in the environment, you naturally speak it'll the language of that. So you, you, I love the point you, they yeah, share that. find you. Yeah. And same thing, like my whole thing now, kind of that 
we'll see how this transition phase goes for me. Yeah. If year 18 happens or if it doesn't, and I go, yeah. I'm just trying to, same thing, kind of switch people's mindsets like we were talking last night, yeah. from kind of a negative mindset to a positive mindset and yeah. have people be more happy, kind of yeah. the same thing, because like I said, your life changes when you start doing that. You, yeah. start, you start elevating yourself. Your life gets better the more positive you look at it, honestly. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Before I wrap up, man, you know, this is a faith and finance type of channel. So where is faith? How, how have you found faith and discarded faith in your life, your journey as a man, as a jugador? As a, my dad's a pastor. So I know that, really. So that's number one. Um, but we've always lived by the rule, God, family, and then whatever else you want to put under it. So God's the first thing that we've always had. So it's faith first. And me and Milton and Fernando were talking last night. Um, I had my kind of time with God and my revelation and how my career kind of started changing was I was laying in bed one night and I was like, hey, you know, I asked the man upstairs. I was like, if this is what I'm supposed to do, like, you'll find a way for me to do it. You'll give me a sign. You'll show me the way, like, and I'll be able to provide for my family with this instead of something else. But if it's not, I understand and we'll make something else happen because that's what I'm going to do. But like, show me what I'm supposed to do. And literally the next day, I got a phone call from my agent to go play winter ball. <laughs> and so they were going to let me come home for uh, my wedding at the time and everything yeah. else. I was like, and it was like, this is the best. I was like, okay. It's like, I'm never going to take this game, this sport, my days that I have here for granted ever again. I'm going to enjoy it. And it's honestly, everything's because of him that yeah. like, you know, every, I'm, I tell people all the time, if I wake up that morning, I can figure everything else out because like I'm blessed enough to wake up because a lot of people Amen. aren't that blessed. It's gratitude. You know, it's gratitude. every day, you know, and people just, you know, pass away for yeah. nothing. A lot yeah. of times, you know, people, yeah. my, my godfather, rest in peace, he passed away in his sleep. So, you know, things like that, like yeah. you never know. <laughs> yeah. it up. So every day I wake up, I'm like, if I wake up, I figure the rest of the day out. Have, have you ever prayed for something expecting God to answer you one way, but the answer you actually got or the call you got was something totally different but yeah it was the blessing that god wanted you to have i feel like that's life and that happens in everything we do i i just try to take the opportunities that roll in front of me so you, you so you don't look at it. it's like lord bless me with an opportunity to play ball but you get the answer for the prayer but it's a different Bill, like, i had whoa. to go to mexico first that was it right there okay 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 <laughs> you know, I got so, it, yeah. and i had to you know not, not to mlb show, mexico it, it was and this is before, it was just years before I ended up getting the call up. So wow. like I said, I asked him to show me the way to be able to provide for my family, which was me going to winter ball at that time to make sure I had enough money to get through the off season, to get through our wedding that we were having that off season to make it. He provided provision. Training. Amen. And then, yeah. you know, I was a free agent. So making sure I had a job. And so I had to go the six, the another three, four year route to yeah. get the call to the major leagues, but I finally yeah. got there. Yeah. So same thing. Like, I, is this what I'm supposed to do? Yeah. yeah. It's supposed, this is what you're supposed to do. But if you're not getting to the major leagues tomorrow. You're gonna cool. You're gonna have to wait another four or five years. And it was worth it. It's always been worth it. You know. I love it, man. Bro, I appreciate you stopping by Vegas. I appreciate you stopping by our annual convention. Appreciate this new friendship. For sure. And I uh, you. if there's anything I can do for you, bro, you, you let me know, man. You know, same here. You know, whatever you need, I'm always here for you. Make sure you follow uh, Mr. Jugador Profesional. <laughs> Jay Jackson here. Uh, we got all the links to Jay here. A little bit of time we spend with him. I'm sure you, you got some notes. You agree with him. You don't agree with him. You got some questions. You want some follow questions? Put it in the comment section below. And also, you can find him on Instagram. We'll put the links here too as well. So that being said, appreciate you checking in with the Seven Figure Squad here on YouTube. Please subscribe, hit like, and until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today. Bye-bye.